Hello, sports fans and White Sox fans. I'm here with the weekly White Sox recap. Now, I know you were probably expecting this on Sunday, but I figured, hey, I had a Stratomatic football game that I wanted to put up on Sunday. Might want to go and check that out. It's the first game of the Sportsman Z Football League. But also, today, Monday, the, the 10th of May, is an off day for the White Sox. So I figured that's a perfect day to do the weekly recap. So this weekly recap is going to go all the way back to May 2nd. And over this time span, from May 2nd to yesterday, May 9th, the White Sox did quite well. We played six games and we were 5-1. and one. We had two games against Cincinnati. We had three against the Royals. And we had one against Cleveland. So uh, let's get on with the, let's get on with the analysis. Yesterday's game, the Sunday game, was um, against the Royals in Kansas City, and that matched Giolito against Mike Miner. And uh, the Sox came into this particular game at 18 and 13. The Royals wasted no time. In the bottom of the first, Merrifield let off with a double. Benintendi singled, and uh, the runners were at the corners at that point. And then Salvador Perez hit into a 4-6-3 double play, but the run came home in the form of uh, Merrifield, and Kansas City took a 1-0 lead. Carlos Santana walked, and then Soler was out. So it was one nothing Kansas City after one inning. But our White Sox came right back. Top of the second, Abreu was hit by a pitch. Your mean Mercedes tripled. Can you imagine that? Mercedes running on a triple? After Grandal uh, got out. And so he knocked in Abreu and he tied the game at one. Then Vaughn walked, and that put runners at first and third. And then Lurie Garcia hit, hit a uh, sack fly to center field, and that made it 2-1 White Sox at that point. And Vaughn went to second base. Mendick singled Vaughn home, and that made it 3-1 White Sox. And then uh, Tim Anderson struck out to end that half inning for the White Sox, and they came out of that... Uh, up 3-1. But in the top of the third, they weren't done yet. Top of the third, Moncada singled. And then with two out, Grandall walked. And by the way, Grandall has been walking quite a bit, if you haven't noticed. He's walked like 13 or 14 times in the last four or five games. That's crazy. I mean, that's Babe Ruth territory. You'd rather see him in Babe Ruth territory for homers, but I'll take it for the walks. Mercedes doubled with uh, uh, doubled both runners home, and um, then uh, and then went to third on the throw to home plate, and it was five one White Sox. In the top of the sixth, Jake Junis came on to relieve Mike Miner. Uh, Andrew Vaughn doubled with two outs, and Lurie Garcia doubled Vaughn home, and it was 6-1 to one White Sox. In the bottom of the sixth, uh, Tony La Russa brought Marshall on in relief of Giolito for some reason. I don't know. I mean, I was a big proponent of uh, La Russa's lately because um, I like his old school management up against this a lot of the new school stuff. But bringing Marshall in that early, I don't. I really don't know why he did that, except maybe that they have an off day tomorrow and he could afford to use some of the guys out of the bullpen and maybe give them some, you know, some uh, innings. But generally, not a great idea. With one out, Santana walked and Soler walked. And then Hoyer came on to relieve Marshall. So Marshall didn't even get an out. Or, yeah, he did. 
take that back. He got one out, and then he uh, walked the two guys, and then they brought Hoyer on. Dozier doubled, or, or Dozier walked to load the bases. So actually, the bases were walked full by White Sox relief pitching. Then Michael Taylor grounded into a fielder's choice and a run scores, and that makes it uh, 6 2 White Sox. And then Hanser Alberto flew out. So it was 6 2 Sox after 6. In the top of the seventh, Anderson led off uh, with a single. Madrigal singled, and it was first and second with no outs. Then Moncada grounded out to first, runners were at second and third, and Abreu singled both runners home, and at this point it's eight to two White Sox. Then in the bottom of the seventh, a leadoff triple by Nicky Lopez of Kansas City. Then there was a sack fly to left field by Merrifield on a great catch by Vaughn. I mean, he laid out on this thing. I think he's getting a lot better and more accustomed to playing left field. Um, and that made it 8-3 White Sox. Then Aaron Bummer came on to relieve Hoyer, and uh, it ended 8-3 after 7. Top of the 8th, Barlow came on to pitch for Kansas City, and he was actually coming on in relief of um, um, Holland who had come in in the interim there between the first reliever and, uh, and Barlow. And in the top of the night, the Sox add a run, and they go on to win that game 9-3, to which brought them to a record of 19-13 and on the year, which is what they are right now as we speak, 19-13 and on their off day. So uh, that takes us to May 8th. May 8th was the um, the White Sox versus Kansas City, Lance Lynn versus Daniel Lynch, and Lynch is exactly what the White Sox did to Daniel Lynch. They lynched him. First inning, he was out in the first inning. He only pitched uh, two-thirds of an inning, gave up seven hits and eight earned runs. Uh, you know, White Sox went on to win this one, uh, I think, the 9-1. to one. It was 9-1, to one, and we got eight of them in the first inning. It was crazy. Uh, Anderson was 2-for-5. Madrigal was 2-for-5. Moncada was 2-for-5 with three RBIs. Mercedes was 1-for-5 with an RBI. Garcia was 2-for-4 with an RBI. Mendick was 1-for-4 with a homer and two RBIs. For the Royals, the only one that did anything was Merrifield, and he was 1-for-4. Um, so then that brings us to the May 7th game. May 7th was um, Rodon going up against, uh, who was he going up against? Mitch, Mitch Keller. So it was Rodon against Keller. And uh, Kansas City also, I want to mention, Kansas City had come into the series against the White Sox on a five-game losing streak, and now that's an eight-game losing streak. So anyway, Rodon came in and he was allowing an 085 batting average. And uh, Keller came in allowing a 333 batting average. But as you will see, he pitched a little better than that against the White Sox. Um, bottom of the second, Tim Anderson made a great uh, over the shoulder catch on a blooper that looked like it would drop in. Uh, with a man on first base, but it ended 0 0. The second inning ended 0 0. Bottom of the fourth, with one out, Carlos Santana and Salvador Perez each singled. Runners were at first and second. Soler struck out, and then Dozier, Dozier struck out. Top of the fifth, Zach Collins homered to dead center field and made it 1-0 White Sox. Andrew Vaughn singled, and then Lurie Garcia bounced into a double play, so it was still 1-0 White Sox after their uh, half of the fifth. Top of the sixth, Tim Anderson hit a one-out double to right field. Adam Eaton singled Anderson home, and it was 2-0 White Sox. Moncada flew out to left, and there was two down. Abreu doubled Eaton home and made it 3-0 White Sox. And then Mercedes flew out to end the threat. Top of the seventh, uh, Brents comes on to relieve Keller for Kansas City. Collins got a leadoff walk. Andrew Vaughn singled to right field, and Billy Hamilton pinch ran for him. 
Garcia bunted the runners over to second and third. Collins tagged was tagged out on a bouncer in front of home plate. An intentional walk to Tim Anderson loaded the bases with two out and he, Adam Eaton struck out. It was still 3 nothing White Sox um, after six and a half. Bottom of the seventh, Cody Hoyer is on for Rodon. Rodon in this game pitched six innings, allowed five hits and no earned runs. Top of the eighth, Irvin Santana is on to relieve Brents. Urban Santana, remember Urban Santana? That dude used to pitch for the Twins back when I was about 15 years old. All right, that's an exaggeration, but the guy's been around. He's been around the block is what I'm saying. A leadoff walk to Moncada. Mercedes singled with one out. Runners were at first and second. Collins struck out and there was two down. And then Hamilton flew out to left. Still three, nothing White Sox um, after seven and a half. Bottom of the eighth, Bummer is on to relieve Hoyer. Ninth inning, uh, Hendricks comes in. He loads the bases, but he hung on to win the game, and the White Sox won 3 0. Um, and also on this particular day, which I was enthralled to hear, the Indians were no hit for the second time this season by a left handed starting pitcher. You'll remember that. Rodon no hit the Indians well. Miley, Wade the Wade Miley of Cincinnati had also no hit them. So, yeah, there's that. So, May 6th, there was uh, no game. That was an off day. Uh, May 5th was Keuchel versus Sonny Gray. The White Sox end up losing this game 1-0 in 10 innings. A heartbreaking loss to the Reds. Um, only Tim Anderson and Madrigal even had a hit. And Keuchel, I mean, you know, you can't blame this one on Keuchel. He went 70, allowed two hits, no earned runs. Hendricks got the loss for a third of an inning with two hits. Um, one run not earned. Probably that was that stupid guy that they put on second base thing. Um, Cincinnati had Winker was two for four with an RBI and Blandino was one for one. Gray pitched seven innings. He allowed two hits and struck out eight. And Lucas Sims came on for the win. One inning pitched, one strikeout, no earned runs. May 4th was the first game against the Reds. And uh, this was Cease versus Hoffman. The White Sox end up winning this one, nine nothing. It's another laugher. Um, the game was played after a brief rain delay. Anderson for the White Sox was two for five with three RBIs. Madrigal was two for five with an RBI. Abreu was two for four with a home run and three RBIs. Vaughn was one for four with an RBI. And Cease pitched six innings, allowed one hit, struck out 11, and allowed no earned runs. For Cincinnati, uh, Tucker Barnhart was two for three. And pitching-wise, Hoffman got the loss. He went two and a third, allowed um, five hits and four earned runs. And Carson Fulmer, our good friend Carson Fulmer, who used to be on the White Sox, pitched two, allowed two hits and an earned run in relief. So that brings us to the May 2nd game. And on the May, in the May 2nd game, that was against the Indians. It was Zach Playsack versus Lucas Giolito. And um, Playsack had struggled versus Chicago, and Giolito had uh, dominated um, them, Cleveland. So we go to the bottom of the first. Lewis Robert beat out an infield single when Ramirez double-clutched, but... Hurt himself on the play, and Adam Eaton, Adam Eaton, pinch ran for him. Now I'm going to come back to this. This was the uh, big injury this week. Uh, Lewis Robert uh, with a uh, a right hip flexor strain. But anyway, I'm going to I'm going to talk a little bit more about that. Uh, top of the third, Caesar Hernandez homered to dead center field, and it's one nothing Cleveland. Bottom of the third, the White Sox loaded the bases on two walks and a hit by pitch, but failed to score as Lamb struck out for the third out with the bases loaded. 
Ahmed Rosario hits a one out triple in the top of the fourth. And Anderson and Moncada both botch a popped up pitch, which makes it 2 nothing Indians with Bowers at first base. Top of the fifth, um, uh, with two out, Ramirez walks, then Ahmed Rosario singles Ramirez to third base. On a hit and run, Naylor flew out to center to end the threat. And uh, top of the sixth, Giolito was taken out after a one-out walk to Jake Bowers, and uh, Jose Ruiz came on in relief. Bottom of the sixth, um, with one out and Lamb at first base um, on a walk, Playsack was relieved by Brian Shaw. Cody Hoyer came on in relief of Ruiz. Ramirez hit a two-run homer to right field. That made it 4 nothing Cleveland. The Indians would go on to win this one 5 nothing, and the Sox dropped to 15-12 and at that particular point. And I think I said that the Sox were 5-1 and this week, and I don't think that that's correct because they lost to the Reds and they lost to Cleveland. So they may actually have been 5-2 um, and two or 4-2. and two. Let's see. But anyway, it was a good week. So we're doing well. I mean, you know, you can't shake a stick at 19 and 13. We're 19 and 13 and leading the division. So, um, you know, what are you going to say? Now, about the Lewis Robert injury that I said I was going to get back to. I'm seeing a lot of stuff on Twitter and Facebook. I was going to say something about this, do a separate video just on this, but I decided not to. I've been seeing a lot of White Sox fans saying, oh, that's it. Oh, we had a good run. I guess it's over now. <laughs> Are you crying? No. Are you crying? Are you crying? There's no crying. There's no crying in baseball. No, it's not over now. For one thing, we're in a very bad division. Nobody in the division is playing well. I mean, except us, and really 19 and 13 is not really setting the world on fire, but it's good. But everybody else is worse than we are. Detroit is terrible. The Twins got off to a terrible start. Who knows if this is the real Twins or not, but right now, they're not good. And uh, Kansas City, we just swept Kansas City without Lewis Robert. Um, you know, and then Cleveland. Cleveland is pro right now... And this is the thing you got to remember, you got to look at. Cleveland is probably the biggest threat to us right now. And they're not even good. So, you know, I, you know, I'm not worried about it. And, you know, and they said that Robert doesn't need uh, surgery. So he might be back in, you know, two months. But anyway, it doesn't matter when he comes back. We've got good depth. We got guys that are learning to play the outfield. Mendick was in the outfield the last game, the May 9th game against um, Kansas, Kansas City and the May 8th game against Kansas City. So, you know, uh, and Vaughn is looking like a natural left fielder out there. And, you know, and, and we get his bat. We get the benefit of his bat. Now, I'm not saying it's, it's good that we don't have Eloy Jimenez and we don't have Lewis Robert, but we have enough depth to, to take care of winning games, especially games that we should win, even without those guys. That's not going to be a problem. I mean, it'll be a little tougher. Some guys are going to have to step up, but we got the team that can do it. So, you know, anybody that's out there saying, oh, that's it, game over, we're done, you're not a White Sox fan. As far as I'm concerned, you're not a White Sox fan. You are selling out because... We're going to win. We're still good. The pitching staff is great. We lead the league in starter ERA. And we have relievers who really have not pitched to their ability yet. And when they start pitching like they're capable of, we're going to take it to the American League. So I don't want to hear anything more on Twitter or Facebook about, oh, that's it, we're done, we're history. No, none of that is true. So uh, let me know how you liked that video. Give me a thumbs up. Leave a comment below. Do I do a White Sox recap every week? Might. 
I might scale it back to once every two weeks. I'm thinking about that, but for right now, it's still the plan is to do it every week, usually on Sunday, but you know, who knows? Every once in a while, it may actually be on Monday like it is now. But that's going to be it for me right now. Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.